Right, so it's, um, it's time for the first part of the TEDx Amsterdam Award. Because I'm sure you know that at TEDx Amsterdam we think that ideas worth spreading are important, but ideas worth doing are even more important. That's why for some years we have this ID competition, a contest. We encourage anyone to send in their ideas, to write essays, to send in their videos. And then a jury takes a lot of time to examine all those ideas and then pick 10 nominees for the TEDx Amsterdam Award. So why not take a look at a video for the 10 nominees for the TEDx Amsterdam Award 2012? TEDx Amsterdam proudly presents the 10 finalists for the TEDx Amsterdam Award 2012. Chantal Engelen with her Too Good to Waste team wants to eliminate food waste. Fresh produce is being discarded because it's not pretty enough. Gert Weinhoven invented a fully biodegradable alternative to synthetic plastics and rubbers. With Clean Tech Playground, Ava Gladek is to produce food, clean water and energy in urban areas. If we're really serious about becoming sustainable in this world, we need to take it seriously. Rosella Ferraro invented an integrated roof wind energy system. Today I'm here to try to show you how to use the move of these propellers. Martina Posma's Repair Cafe brings back repairing instead of throwing away. I think that's the direction where the world should go. Marcel Verdun's Ice from the Sky project makes use of the Earth's atmosphere for cooling. I saw ice crystals forming in the plane and I thought how can we make use of that cold? Lisetta Stamsnader and Richard Van Det worked on a social energy plan for an energy saving community. That was such an eye opener if we thought well then we have to go on with that and this gets really interesting when more data sources can be combined. Massimo Michi's project pushes the frontiers of prostate cancer diagnostics and treatment. The Cardinal's CO2 converter generates fuel using sunlight, CO2 and salt water. I thought, hey, I've got another idea to try and help save the world from carbon dioxide. Wouter Browns developed a screening device for malaria detection in blood samples of pregnant women. Which is affordable, which is mobile, in which we want to fight malaria. And the winner is... And the winner is... Kind of exciting. And just to make one thing clear, at TEDx Amsterdam, all ideas are winners. So uh, the last 30 ideas, uh, we, we, we invited them uh, for workshops and we give them speech coaches, etc. So all ideas are valuable, but there can only be one winner of the first TEDx Amsterdam Award. And here to tell us who the winner will be, I would like to invite a very special person. He is the treasurer of the TEDx Amsterdam Foundation. Please welcome Paul Rispens. Hey Paul, great to see you on stage, Thank you. on such short notice. Uh, so you are the uh, treasurer of this event, uh, what happens here financially? Uh, true, uh, but also of all the other events who take place under the paraplu, how do you call that? Of umbrella. Uh, umbrella of yeah. uh, TEDx uh, Amsterdam Foundation, sorry. Yeah. Yep. yeah, all right, so TEDx Amsterdam um, Youth, Women. Youth, education, uh, women, life, uh, change, well, you name it. Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> it is. Right. So, but that's why I know that I can trust you. Could you please tell us who the winner of the TEDx Amsterdam Award 2012 is? I would Ra -ba -ba. like to do that, but I need an envelope. All right. It's in here. <laughs> wow. You even it has never been this. opened before, this envelope. <laughs> And the winner is... Marcel Verduin, Eyes from the Sky. Oh, wow. <laughs> Where is he? There you are. Okay, go on stage. <laughs> right, Marcel. Wow, that's Great. nice. Excellent. I won't congratulate you yet. Please share with the audience your idea, Eyes from the Sky. 
Thank you, Jim. Enjoy. Marcel Verdijk. No. Okay. Pink Floyd had a famous song called I Wish You Were Here. In some ways, I'd rather wish not to be here. That would imply that there is no lack of cold, that there are no large amounts of food rotting and wasted in any place of the world. That would imply that we are ready to prepare the, the rapidly world-growing world population with energy in, in an environmentally benign way. That would imply, especially to those who live in more remote areas, who would not have the privilege of having access to it at all. But that is not the case. None of it. In 2050, the world population will have reached 9 billion people. And the energy demand will have, uh, will, have, will have increased double the amount as it is now. And we are facing that challenge already at the, at the moment that we are at, at this moment. To complicate things, the world will run short of energy, water, and food. This requires solutions to all three elements at the same time. My name is Marcel Verduin, as I said before, and I'm a gas processing engineer at Shell. During my studies in chemical engineering in Delft and in Zurich, I focused on transport phenomena. I am thrilled to have the opportunity to tell you about my idea and how it could make a valuable, valuable improvement to our planet. During my recent flight to Brazil, ice crystals appeared on the cabin window. And I started wondering, I started wondering, it's how can we take advantage of that cold? The reason being that it is thermodynamically and economically very expensive to generate cold, much more than generating heat. And at that moment, my idea, ice from the sky, came up. Why is this an idea, idea worth considering? Why is this an idea worth doing? Everybody on Earth needs cold. To keep food fresh and cool, to keep food, food fresh, room school, and for many further industrial applications. Not needing, did you know that 40% of food produced worldwide is lost during its transport and storage? 40%. Not, needed, not needing to make use of electricity for cooling would reduce the CO2 footprint. In poorer communities, in remote places of the world, people do not even have the possibility of making use of, uh, of, the, of an electrical grid system, because it's not there at all, and uh, simply connecting the refrigerator. The idea is, to use a balloon to, to lift a flexible, a flexible water container into the sky. When it's high enough, the water freezes. By, by connecting two balloons with a line, the, uh, the two balloons balance, and we can make the system move up and down, one, one balloon going up, one balloon going down, re requiring a relatively little amount of, en of energy. Water is nature's energy carrier. Water is nature's energy carrier. It stores a lot of energy, especially during its freezing and evaporation. Did you know that melting one ton of water requires 100 light bulbs of 40 watts to burn all day and night, 24 hours? To, to illustrate in another way, did you know that melting ice requires the same amount as heating up water for 80 degrees centigrade? Remote, small villages in the middle of nowhere with no access to electricity can very much uh, uh, benefit, benefit from this, uh, from this uh, system. For example, this model, the, the model of producing, selling, and distributing the ice would benefit the commuting by creating employment, reducing waste, improving health, and better food hygiene. This would improve quality of life, and would put remote villages back on the map. Fresh food itself could also be sent up 
The fresh food would come back frozen to the earth, where it could be stored in, where it could be distributed, or it could be stored in ice houses, as we did in past days. This is a technically healthy concept. It is in an early, early, early stage of development, and it still needs to be proven and demonstrated and matured. There can be ch challenges along the way, or it may not be commercially viable, but I believe that we owe it to ourselves to try it. This, this serves as an example to get some of us to be more courageous, to think out of the box, to, to, contribute, to contribute to challenges, to contribute to resolving the challenges our planet Earth is facing. I thank Shell for encouraging staff to do so, and, but, and its game changer change team, particularly Michael Richier, and my further teammates for, con for their contributions. The next project deliverable will be, should be, is it technically feasible? Then we must design and estimate the costs of a prototype for demonstration in, 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 a, in a local community in 2013. We can't do this alone. We need to do this together. We need your and Ted's support. TEDx as a platform could help to inspire and engage a much wider audience of expertise, specialists, and providers of, of elements required for the technology development. We truly are stretching the, the applications of traditional ballooning to help our planet and its inhabitants. Let me conclude by saying, my passion and purpose of, my, of the free of the ice ID is to make it happen by turning the ID into reality. I look forward to present at the TED 2013 event and I, to show you that we have managed to lift this idea from the ground and to show that it, that it is the coolest idea on earth. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Myself and Dan. Please stand on the, yes. on the dot, yeah. Because yeah, uh, uh, there are so many photographers present, we need to uh, capture this moment. Paul, could you do the honor of giving Marcel the award, of the TEDx Amsterdam Award? Congratulations, very much. Thank you very, very, you thank earned. You very much. It's heavy. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.